Hello everybody, my name is Ratnos, and in this video I want to make a quick crash course for Encrypted, for Tazavesh, for every new Mythic Plus thing that's coming out in uh, a day from when this video comes out. So, uh, first off, a thing to talk about is going to be what's the point of doing M+, Plus? and that is item level has gone up, item level will go up to 255 from end of dungeon, from a plus 10 or higher, but it's still worth it to do a plus 15 if you can, because you're feeding into your great vault that you'll open next week, and that will be up to 278 if you can do plus 15s uh, for the dungeons that, that fill that vault. Uh, that's only eight dungeons fills the whole row now, not 10. That's a nice little nerf uh, that came in recently for the great vault, so not too much dungeons need to be done for that compared to, I guess it's about the same. It's about the same as 10. It's a little bit less. It's nice. Uh, but we also went from a 210 total dungeons that are in the pool with the addition of Tazavesh. So uh, I guess let's start off by talking about the Tazavesh dungeons, and then I'm going to talk about Encrypted just kind of in general. Um, the two Tazavesh dungeons are... They're going to be tough because they're unfamiliar, but actually their mechanics aren't too bad once you know how to play around them. Um, so give it a couple a couple tries right to do the dungeon a couple times and you'll start to to get pretty familiar with them um the big stuff is in this first room here of streets of wonder there are going to be swirlies on the ground when you're fighting custom security those are the grenades uh, you want to move out of those and there are going to be beam splicers created whenever you're fighting armored overseers this is a really nasty spinning beam that puts a dot on you if it touches you you can jump over it but it's better to just pull the fight away from those beam splicers when they spawn and avoid... If people in high keys, if people start getting even a tick of this, uh, it, it'll be pretty lethal. So you do want to avoid that if you can. Uh, the rest of the dungeon, I would, I would get as little trash as you can from this area. So pulling a little bit extra trash before you go and do Miza's Oasis and then skipping a bunch of this middle trash towards the end is the way that I have this route here. You can grab this route on Raider.io. It'll go up tomorrow... Uh, like at reset time on the weekly reset uh so you can grab that there and uh i might i might still make some adjustments to it before it goes live but this is my current thinking for just kind of the easiest way to attack this dungeon is go right after you come out of the first boss area and then get a little bit extra trash down here go do mises oasis go do the postmaster in this room most important thing to do is to stun open cage from the defective sorter uh, so do that and you'll make your life a lot easier in this room. Then come back out, go through the middle here, hugging the wall, do the Grand Menagerie, and go do Last Boss. Done. Job's done. Uh, so really, yeah. Again, you'll need to learn the mechanics, but fairly forgiving dungeon once you once you sort of have the mechanics down. So Leah's Gambit, uh, a couple of things to note about this dungeon. There are a couple of percentage points that are good to know. You want 35% of your count from the Murloc area, or 48% of your count before you pull the first boss. These guys are worth 13% uh, right here. So yeah, 48% before you before you pull the first boss, and you'll be all set uh, in in terms of count as long as you pull all the all the rest of the trash and all the rest of the dungeon. That's actually if you don't do any skips, this is you know just hugging left, pulling all the Murloc packs, skipping all the giants from hugging left will get you the count that you need. Uh, or you can do something more fancy, and you can do a skip and you know pull a bunch of stuff in this area instead get your 35 from something like this instead i guess this is even overcount um so yeah some some kind of some kind of strategy like that uh, you could even use the woe cipher from this pack to get you a skip towards the you know this part of the dungeon uh, if you wanted to and then and then pull over here the big thing to note about this area is these murlocs are really annoying they flee when they're low on health uh, and they'll pull a bunch of other stuff into the pack with you and the most critical mob to be aware of is the scale binders the scale binders do a cast that's called invigorating fish stick and this is a huge problem if this goes off uh, it creates a totem that you can kill but while you're killing it it's healing up the whole pack and you can't try and burst through it because it's a damage reduction as well on the rest of the pack. So stun the scale binders on this cast and you'll make your life so much easier. Uh, and 
If you don't stun it, then do switch targets to the totem as soon as it spawns and kill it really quickly. As long as you do that, the rest of it, it's mostly about just saving AoE stuns, that kind of stuff, for as things start to flee. Uh, and pulling pulling each pack back to a safe area. There are a couple of patrols that'll be annoying here, like this Shore Runner pack. This the Goliaths are all patrols basically, so you're gonna want to be fighting so that you don't accidentally pull them. Give them more room than it looks like you'll need, because again, your pack is gonna start fleeing when it gets low. Um, so if you can handle that, if you can handle this area, then you've got uh, first boss. First boss, there's a weak aura that I would recommend for the first boss. Uh, it's called wago.io slash Tazavesh console. And this weak aura, uh, will get, I'll put it in the description as well, but it gives you whoever is using the front console will can use this to send to anybody else in the group that's using the weak aura where they should deposit their orb uh, and also put it in party chat for anybody that's not using the weak aura. So really helpful tool uh, for this fight. If you do get multiple intermissions, don't trust it right at the start of the phase because it, it might give the old information from the last intermission right at the start of the phase. So do be careful of that. But other than that, just a really fantastic weak aura that makes that fight pretty easy. Uh, and then this area, this boss is really dangerous. This boss has a bunch of mechanics that will get you killed. But the big one to always be aware of as a DPS player is the hook swipe. Anytime you're behind this boss, it's going to tail swipe you for a, a nasty bleed and a knockback. So... The tank is going to be spinning the boss and running it all around the room for all kinds of reasons. And as a DPS player, you just want to make sure you're not behind the boss if it's ever not casting, because it will cast a hook swipe and and murder you. The tank wants to be using the boss's facing to aim the infinite breath at the adds that spawn, because that, that kills them. Uh, so that means that the boss is going to be spinning somewhat randomly sometimes. Anyways, uh... BRB real quick, looks like the mob I'm trying to get the mount from spawned real quick, so let me just try and kill this and get the mount, and then I'll, I'll get right back to this important video. Okay, never lucky. Never, uh... Ah, never lucky. Alright, uh, anyways. As I was saying. Uh, okay, so after this boss, you go to this area. These adorn Starseers really deadly, so... You want to be careful of them because they, they summon wandering pulsars. You need to nuke these down pretty quickly because they do a lot of group-wide damage. But also, while you're not looking at them, they're going to be aiming a drifting star at somebody in your party. And that is a really fast-moving bowling ball projectile that will just murder everybody that it hits. So uh, be really, really careful and respectful of the adorned stars here, especially this pull where you have to pull two of them. Uh, next week, it should be a tyrannical week. So I, you probably don't have to like bloodlust this, but when it gets to fortified week, I think this is a, probably going to be a good bloodlust. Uh, this pull right here. Um, we we don't know what the other affixes that are accompanying are, by the way. There's a good chance it'll be bolstering explosive uh, because they've changed the affix schedule, but maybe not all of the weeks. They changed it to break up sanguine and necrotic, but it's unclear how many of the other weeks were affected. So we may be looking at a bolstering explosive tyrannical week. We may not be. Uh, so. Yeah, that's the that's the info on those affixes. Anyways, that's a quick look at Tazavesh. Let's take a quick look at what the encrypted affix does. So, the encrypted affix creates these relics. You can see them on MDT with, you can see like here, Vi relic, Woe relic, Ur relic. Anytime you see encrypted, it's always those same those same three: the Vi relic, the Ur relic, and the Woe, the Woe relic. The Woe relic is the square, the Vi relic is the pointy one, and the Ur relic is the circle. And the way it works is that anytime you see encrypted, uh, you when you kill the relics, an ad will spawn. Which ad spawns will be based on which of the relics you killed first. So if you kill the Ur relic first, then when you kill all three of the relics, the Ur mob will spawn. Uh, and each of them has a different set of abilities and a different set of rewards that you get for killing them. The Vi Automa is a sniper. It doesn't move but on its own. It does teleport randomly sometimes, but you can't move it yourself, which can be kind of annoying. It shoots random players in your group, and it teleports around and creates like lines that you have to get out of. Um, when you kill it, you get 45 seconds of 15% increased haste, and you get a little orb that follows you for that time as well that deals damage or heals your targets. So this is a good all-around target to kill. The times that you want this are that haste is just all-around generally quite good. But the uh, 
the the fact that it's a 45 second buff as well means you can do it and still have it for quite a long time. On the other hand, the Ur Relic creates the Ur Guy, which is a big tank buster. Uh, it does a damage taken increase to your tank every so often. Uh, and it also does a, a swirly slam that you need to dodge. But when you kill it, you get 10 seconds of a boatload of, of spell and, and ability cooldown rate. So you'll get, I think it's 200% spell and ability cooldown rate for 10 seconds. So it'll give you 20 seconds off of all of your cooldowns. But also if you just have like rotational stuff, you know, if you're just a, um, if you're a frost mage, you can just press blizzard every global. It'll, you'd be, it'd be like blizzard, blizzard, frozen orb, blizzard, blizzard. If you're in an AOE situation, like that kind of stuff uh, is, is what your rotation looks like even against like five targets. If you get, uh, if you get the error effect. So this is potentially really strong for bursting down bosses. There's a set of relics with every single boss, so you get to decide what you want there. And it's also nice because it doesn't require the, the mob itself doesn't require your DPS to do much. You just have to dodge the swirly, and your tank is taking a bit of extra damage. So this is another good option. And then finally, there's the Woe Relic, the square one. This makes a mob that doesn't do much of anything except for a burst cast. You need to kick that cast, uh, but otherwise it doesn't really do anything. So it's pretty safe to fight this unless you're in a pool that has a bunch of other casts that you need to kick. The Woe Cypher that you get when you kill the Woe Automa is one minute long, 150% increased movement speed, 15% reduced damage taken, and if you're out of combat, you're, in, you're stealthed as well. Uh, so that is really strong, but very situational. Let me show you a situation here that I think it's potentially really strong in. So here's the other side. I have two routes that are going to be available on Raider.io for DOS. One that's pretty standard, where you're just going to go around the dungeon in a pretty standard way, kill some packs. But here's what you can do with Woe Ciphers in this dungeon. You can kill the Woe Cipher in the very first pack, and that gets you a minute of this. That is more than enough to get you all the way into the Ardenweald wing very quickly and skip past this pack here. Then you can kill on down towards this boss. After you kill the boss, zip back up here, kill this pack, get another Woe Cipher, and zip back through uh, this, this hallway that you can't mount in even really quickly. So... Uh, that'll save you all the time that it costs you to kill this pack and get some extra count. Then you come out here, do this pack, do this guy, do this pack, get another Woe Cipher, and you can zoom all the way through here, get these oils down, do this boss, pop out, kill this stuff, get another Woe, Woe Cipher, and again, zoom past this dental drill that you've now skipped on the way in and the way out with the Woe Stealth. Uh, and you come out, you can zoom all the way over to here, kill the spirit, and then do the rest of the dungeon as normal. Uh, and then you get to potentially use the Vi for some more consistent damage on Hakar. You could either use the Vi or maybe even the Ur and time it for the intermission phase on Wezala, make it a lot easier to burst down your, your platform ads, and bang, dungeon handled. So that's an example of, this is an experimental route, but I think this is some stuff that you could do with these uh, with these relics to just get a, a huge amount of value from each of the different types of effects. So in my routes, that you, if you if you pick them up off Raider.io tomorrow, um, many of the packs, I just won't have any of the relics selected. But if I do have something selected, or if I have a note that explains how to use one of them, uh, then that will, that'll be, you know, how to how to get some extra value. Otherwise, just in a regular pull, uh, I would default to the, the Vi one or the Ur one if you have DPS players that get a lot of value out of the, uh, the cooldown rate. This one also restores healer mana, but never pick it for that. Healers are not people and uh, should not get mana. Halls of Atonement, uh, there's not too much that changes in this first area because of encrypted. You can use like a woe here to zip over. So like say you go left at the start, right? Do this stuff, then you can get a woe relic and zip back over here. But this is outdoors. You can mount out here, so it's not that much better than just mounting and going over there. Whereas in DOS, right, you're going through all these areas that you can't mount in. Uh, and it's really nice to have that movement speed. Uh, Halls of Atonement, though, you, you can use a Woe Relic after the first boss to skip to the second boss instead of using a Shroud or an Invis Pot. So, you know, that makes that a lot easier, right? Mists. Here's a new skip you can do in Mists. This pack that basically never got pulled before, you can now pull it, get the Woe Relic, and skip all this nonsense here. Do you need to be careful of this Tyrannin Villager? Tyrannin Villager has True Sight, so... You are going to want to hug the wall 
Uh, if you hug the wall, it won't see you. But if you aren't paying attention and you just walk right next to it, it will see you and it will uh, <laughs> it will kill you. So do be careful of that. Another thing you might want to do is save like the Ur Relic, right? This 10 second buff, really powerful in the burn phase on Ingram Alec. So uh, consider using that there with Lust, especially if you have some classes that benefit from that cooldown recovery in their cooldowns. Uh, it is absolutely insane what you can do to Ingram Alec with it. Uh, Plaguefall, I don't have anything special about Plaguefall with, with relics in my, my plan here. One thing to note is that basically every single pull for some reason in Domino Venom Blade's room has relics, so be ready for that, including this one mod. Like, look at this, look at this, there's one, two, three, four, five sets of relics over here, although this one's pretty easy to skip off the side, but, you know, every single pull in this area has them, so uh, a little weird. Sanguine Depths, again, I have two routes that are going to be available. One has skips and one doesn't have skips. Important to note here, the one with skips, the skips aren't actually woe skips. Like this skip is still just a shroud or an invis pot or mind soothes and stuff actually uh, can sometimes get you past it. Like mind soothes and door of shadows and stuff uh, can get can get people past these mobs in some cases too. Um, and this skip here is also not a woe skip. So this this one you're only going to want to do if you have shrouds and invis pots otherwise just use the use the easy route walk through in a straight line fight a little bit more annoying mobs but a lot easier easier life right not having to to try and coordinate any skips uh, then spires there's a woe relic here towards the third boss that you can use to to make this skip happen uh, so recommend doing that nice and easy Whoop. skip on past all this stuff and don't have to do any of that hopping around the side nonsense uh, or shrouds or anything like that. You just get the woe relic and zoom on through. Uh, Necrotic Wake, a woe relic here, will let you skip to a Marth. So I recommend that. Nice and easy. Zip on past there. Uh, Theater of Pain. I don't have any relics as part of my plan here. My route, there are a couple things you could try. You could try using this woe relic to skip on down past some of this stuff. Uh, if you wanted to. I don't see a really easy way to use a relic to skip this pack, but maybe you could as well. Maybe you could, like, I don't know, fight these two at the same time, kill the woe relic as well, and and then use it to skip this pack. But realistically, if you want to skip this pack, which is a pretty good idea, this pack is kind of annoying, uh, you probably still want to just use invis pots or shrouds and stuff. Uh, but I decided it wasn't a big enough deal to make two different routes for this dungeon. So, uh, But I do recommend that if you're... If you're trying to do high keys uh, in this place, this is to avoid pulling this pack. And then, yeah, that's it for dungeons. I don't have any specific uses of Woe in Streets of Wonder or Solia's Gambit that I recommend either, but I absolutely recommend experimenting with all three of the different cipher effects in different situations. Try and come up with ways that, especially the Woe Relic for pathing, can do something cool for you, because my bet is that there's a lot of cool things that can be done with it. And then find whichever of Ur or Vi is better for your group. That answer is going to depend on how good Ur is for your damage dealers in a lot of cases. Uh, for some specs, this is really powerful. For other specs, this is just like, hey, my Incarn's going to be up 20 seconds sooner. But for other specs, it's like, hey, during these 10 seconds, you know, I'm going to pop off. So find out which of those groups you're in and let that inform your decisions. And you also sometimes will need to decide based on like, hey, this automa will be really annoying here, right? Like the Vi Interceptor, generally a little bit more annoying than the Ur, Ur guy. Uh, so sometimes that will affect your decision. Other times you can handle either of them just fine. And so, you know, it won't. Similarly, the Woe Drifter, pretty easy to kill in most cases. If your interrupts are spoken for, then it becomes a lot harder to take care of because it has a pretty important interrupt. If it gets its burst cast off, you won't die, but you will take quite a bit of cosmic damage. So you do want to be careful of that. Anyways, uh, I hope this video has helped somewhat prepare you for the dungeons and hopefully not left you uh, more confused than, than when you came to it. Uh, yeah, again, the routes will be available on Raider.io on reset time. So that gives me a little bit more time to just polish them. They might look a little bit different than they did in this video because uh, I do need to do a couple last checks through them. Uh, I've done a couple PTR keys even this week to try and try and finalize them. So... Hopefully they work well for you. I will be updating them over the next couple of weeks as well uh, based on based on feedback and everything. So if you end up doing one of these dungeons and there's something cool that I didn't see or there's something in my routes that is, is really not working for you, 
uh, do let me know and I will try and make those adjustments. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.